to lead the league in passing yards. I went first last time, Mike, so first pick is yours. I, I actually think this person would be around at four if I left you, this, mm-hmm. this, this quarterback. But I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to take my Miami Dolphins quarterback, Tua tunga Bailoa here to lead the league in passing plus 800. It's a Miami offense that brought in Odell Beckham Jr. as a number three option. I love him over the middle, being able to, to can you continue to move the chains for Miami. But this is an offense that now doesn't have nearly as good of a defense. Miami is going to have to consistently put up points. They're going to try and do it through the air. You've got Waddle, you've got Hill, you've got explosive weapons there. And I expect Tua to get a little bit better each year inside this offense that we're seeing. So let's go with uh, let's go with Tua tunga Bailoa plus 800 to lead the NFL in passing would not have been there at uh, four. For really? You. So good pick on your part. Ooh. Yes. Yes. Because I, I was know. going, you knew where I was going with my first one, Jared Goff, Jared Goff at eight to one. Jared Goff is inside of a dome in the majority of his games. It looks like as of right now, and of course we can't predict the weather months and months and months in advance, Mike, but just given the time of year that everything's there, Really only at risk of one or two weather games and everything else is going to be great for Jared Goff. The one thing that people talk trash about with Jared Goff is that he can't throw in bad weather. Cold weather really bothers him, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Well, looks like he's only going to have to deal with that maybe one time over the course of the season, two at most. And I think when people look at this, and this is why we've been beating the drum so much here for Jared Goff, I just don't think people realize what type of season he had last year third in the NFL in yards per game, second in the NFL in total yards. Yes, this very award, this this very stat that we are betting right now, he was second last year with 4,575 yards, and he actually gets year two of Jameer Gibbs, year two of Sam Laporta, year basically year one of Jamison Williams being able to actually work out with the team for the entire year when he's not suspended or injured. So give me Jared Goff at 8-1. to one. I just I think that this Lions team, this offense, could be really, really special. Yeah, I had a friend ask me what the biggest offseason move was in the NFL. I said, keeping Ben Johnson in Detroit, keeping mm-hmm. him there as the OC, being able to get another year under the belt with this offense. You get Gibbs second year, Laporta second year. It's all systems go for this Detroit team. Don't hate the pick at all, Matt. So I'll go ahead and I'll stick to our we're, – we're beating the drum. We're going to go ahead and we're going to bet – all these drum beats. So let's go ahead. Kirk Cousins, 14 to 1. Um, it's a offense in which I know people are going to look and say, like, oh, they say they want to get ball power. The, I mean, uh, uh, the ball more. And it's like, yeah, they're, they're, they're going to through the passing game. And listen, Kirk Cousins, one thing we know, Mike, we are looking here at a, at a dude that is a prolific passer in the NFL. Make no mistake. Like, I think we clown on Kirk Cousins and stuff. And, all the stuff that he's been through and, of course, the chain and the all whatever. We clown on him. This guy, if you just give him weapons, all he does is put up stats and all he does is put up numbers. We forget when he got hurt last year, that Vikings team was rolling on the offensive side. And, listen, if this team, maybe that defense isn't quite as good as you and I think this year. That could be even better for us in a market like this. So give me Kirk Cousins 14-1. to yeah, my only concern with Cousins is how much they run the football, right? Is, are we going to get more Bijan Robinson? Is that going to take away from his opportunities? And then that, that division so bad. Are they going to be ahead too much in division? You don't get those passing yards. But he could have a monster season here. And you do have some weapons there with, with Pitts and everybody else. And, and let's say the downfall to this is what if the Falcons are even better than you and I think they're going to be. And then in fourth quarters, it's just it's run just the clock. Right, right. So let's I will say this there is a big downside to this and that is the Falcons are even better than we think they're going to be or that division is even worse than we think it's going to be and you get six games a year in which they're just sitting on the ball in the fourth quarter you know so yeah that, that's how it doesn't pan out I, I'm gonna go with one of the favorites here um I give me Dak Prescott plus 650 as the number four pick here in the draft like this this Cowboys offense they like to throw the football around we're not sure what we're going to get from the running game you've still got CeeDee Lamb one of the best wide receiver ones in the game you've got multiple weapons like Ferguson a tight end as well Dak is in one of those situations where this could be a contract year for mm-hmm. him where it's important that he does put up those stats I think Prescott has a big year here we'll see if he can stay healthy for all 17 games that's been an issue for him but Prescott plus 650 here number four pick yeah, no, I don't I don't mind that at all. I mean, we know one thing. They don't have much of a running back room right now. So if they're going to move the ball, it's likely going to need to be through the air. I, I can only assume they're going to sign somebody here, you know, when it's all said and done. But yeah, right now it looks pretty bleak. Let's go to another quarterback who I don't love the running back room for. Now, this is 
look, Jordan Love has gotten a ton of pub for mm-hmm. MVP, got a lot of press for the Packers here, yep. but you've got a plethora of young weapons there. We saw them really come on later in the season. You don't have, uh, you don't have uh, uh, Aaron Jones in the backfield anymore. You're replacing it with Josh Jacobs. When I think about those two, one's explosive, the other's three yards in a cloud of dust. I'll take the three yards in a cloud of dust guy if I'm trying to get the most passing yards in the NFL. Let's go with Jordan Love, 16 to one, fifth pick overall for me. It's since I have back to back picks, I don't think I'm going to be able to get past putting Joseph Jesus H. Burrow into my uh, in, into my portfolio <laughs> here. Uh, Burrow at eight and a half. LSU Homer pick. Uh, Burrow at eight and a half to one. I mean, so here's here's the thing, Mike. I can't. I don't know if T. Higgins is actually placated or not. I don't know if he's going to be bought in completely. I would like to think a dude that is still going to make north of twenty million dollars as a professional athlete, knowing he's still going to get paid in the offseason, even if he doesn't get a deal done with it, would show up for work and, and try to win a championship. So I'm just going to assume that he's a pro, right? If that's the case, you still have an incredible one-two punch for Joe Burrow to throw. And I know that we've kind of laughed about this where they redone the offensive line yet again. I know, redone the <laughs> offensive line yet again. But again, supposedly a better offensive line for Joe Burrow again this year if it all plays out like they think, he should at least be in the conversation. Yeah, I'm sure one of these years, the offensive line will finally be decent and bro <laughs> will be healthy in the preseason. I'm not sure it'll be this year, but eventually it has to happen. So let's go off the reservation here a little bit. And why don't we throw one in for Justin Herbert? And the reason I say this, Mike, is I think there is way too much love for this Chargers team. I think this Chargers team is going to be struggling to get to 500 this year. I think just I think that you could be looking at Justin Herbert having deficits in multiple different games this year in which they are just going to have to dig from way far behind. He is 40 to 1. I understand the wide receiver room isn't all that great for Herbert, but sometimes you just get those soft coverages. It doesn't matter, right? And so uh, give me a long shot on a guy who's got a ton of arm talent and uh, might actually, th- I think, be playing for a worse team than most people will realize. Yeah, I'm surprised he's 40 to 1 when their win total is over 8.5. It seems like he has to have a big season here if they're going to win games. Mm-hmm. And yet, this, this, that doesn't really, or this number doesn't really line up with that same assumption. Uh, I am going to take two guys I don't love here. Yeah. I'm going to be honest. Like, these aren't guys I'm really running to window to bet. Give me CJ Stroud at plus 600. I could see Houston throwing the football yeah. all over the yard. I think it makes sense to take him there at that number. And then I'll take. I'll take Matthew Stafford at 14 to one. You've got Nakua, you've got cup, you've got an explosive offense. I'm worried that they're going to run the ball a little too much for him to be actually able to win this award. But when I look through this list, like I don't want Lawrence, I don't want Purdy. I don't want Rogers. I don't want Allen. So we'll, we'll go with Stafford at 14 to one. I mean, I guess we can't have a draft in which we draft 10 quarterbacks and don't take the best player on the planet. Right. So I guess I'll wrap things He's up. With Patrick Mah- it. I guess I'll wrap it up with Patrick Mahomes. I mean, it, 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 the best player to maybe ever play the position in the history of football. If we left him off of this draft, then what are we doing, Mike? But you'd never bet him at five to one, right? No, because it's just one of those things where injury, I mean, injuries happen. What if they're really, really good again? There are a lot of things that can go against you here, but now that we're getting to the 10th pick, I think it's probably worthy of the 10th pick in the draft. That's fair. He is one of the top 10 people to win this award, and because of how we're going back and forth here, I do think it's worthwhile taking him. 